Welcome to JR Digital Media. Now when I say IMAX, you're probably thinking of either this or this. But IMAX isn't just about a bigger screen, it's so much more than that. And that's what we're here to talk about today. The name IMAX comes from two words, image, maximum. IMAX. When you go see a normal movie in cinemas, the standard ratio is 2.39 by 1. And these films are normally shot on 35mm or 70mm widescreen film. The millimetres correspond to how large the actual frame is. So 70mm has double the resolution of 35mm. Obviously. But when we're talking about IMAX, it's a whole new level. Normal film is played from top to bottom. Uh, but IMAX is not 70 millimeters long like this. It's actually 70 millimeters high and it's actually 15 perforations long, making IMAX frames 10 times bigger than 35 millimeter frames. IMAX's ratio therefore is 1.43 by 1, making it a little bit more square, but actually creates a more immersive experience for the audience, which I'll be diving into a little bit later. The increased pixels for frame on its own is not what makes IMAX the gold standard in cinema. IMAX comes with its own system of proprietary equipment and processes, which means each frame is outputted at the highest resolution and each screening is best optimized for sharpness and clarity. IMAX even uses its own projectors that are designed and built in-house to run the heavy spools of film. These projectors are purpose-built for dealing with the bulky film reels and actually feed the film in horizontally instead of vertically like in standard film projectors. There's even a vacuum system that ensures each frame is orientated correctly on the lens. Even the bulbs in the projectors are 15,000 watts and water-cooled because could you imagine how hot 15,000 watts is going to get? Fun fact, these projectors can weigh up to two tons. You don't want to be pushing that up some steps. IMAX cameras have the highest resolution of any movie camera out there. 18K of amazingness. When projected in film format, the quality is the same, but when you're projecting digitally, current technology only allows 8K output onto the big screens. Shooting with IMAX cameras is a little tricky. They're heavy and they're large, which means directors often find themselves restricted in how and where they can place these cameras. But this doesn't mean that they haven't tried getting them in places where they physically couldn't. The movie industry and IMAX have long been working together to refine the technology to make IMAX cameras more agile, and directors such as Christopher Nolan have been known to work extensively with IMAX whilst on set to see how they can take things to the next level. You'll all remember The Dark Knight, released in 2008. This was the first mainstream movie to partially use 70mm IMAX cameras in its shoot. The iconic opening scene which introduces the Joker was filmed entirely in IMAX and I still remember my initial reaction when I saw this movie on Blu-ray for the first time and I thought, wow, the extra screen real estate really does help plunge you right into the action. It was for Nolan's films that they actually adapted IMAX cameras which weigh anywhere from 40 to 60 kg and uh, turned them into handheld cameras. This had never been done before due to the sheer size and bulk of the cameras, but they found a way and boy was it worth it. Once the film's been shot, the reels are shipped off to specially built warehouses which keep the temperature constantly low to protect the integrity and maintain the quality. IMAX film reels undergo months of processing before they even get to the editing suite. The first hurdle is getting all the film scanned and to maintain the high level of detail, each frame is scanned individually. So you can imagine how long a movie's worth of film is gonna take. Next, the scanned frames undergo DMR, Digital Media Remastering. Works on every frame to produce the sharpest of images. You've probably noticed that IMAX tickets cost considerably more than other movie going experiences. But weighing up what we've spoken about, I think the cost is justified. One movie shot on IMAX could produce £35,000 worth of film. This doesn't even include post processes or even like tweaking or editing or anything like that. IMAX Digital, however, is a lot more cost effective. It's basically a £200 hard drive plugged into the projectors, but even getting to that stage costs a lot. IMAX as a company sets controls in the actual screens that the movies are shown in, 
which means the whole theatre is set up for optimal viewing angles. So to get the full IMAX experience, take an ordinary cinema set up like this and increase the screen size to 72 by 52 feet. Bring the screen closer to the audience and slightly curve it so each individual field of vision is full. Layer the seating so each seat is in its optimal viewing angle and then add 18,000 watts worth of speaker power. And there you have it. Crystal clear 16K viewing experience with spine shaking audio. Another fun fact, you can actually get an IMAX certified home theatre installed into your house if you have a spare half a million pounds lying around. And that's your introduction to IMAX. I actually really enjoyed researching all of this information and um, I might actually make a little fun format out of this. Call it film format. We'll see. But if you enjoyed watching this video, you know what to do. Leave a like, make sure you subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.